Scott McLeod here back uh, with Flagstick.com and today we've got a special guest, Todd Kirstead. Great to see you. Great to see you again, buddy. Todd was visiting with us last year here at the Ottawa Gatineau Golf Expo and we had a great time. And Todd's been here doing shows this week and also promoting a few things, a few initiatives. Uh, if you remember, bring back the game last year that we spoke about and we can talk about that more today for people that maybe have not seen it before. What is Bring Back the Game all about? Bring Back the Game is bringing the game of golf back to individuals who thought they've lost it due to both physical or mental situations. It's a powerful tool. Um, staggering numbers, 22% of all golfers have quit the game due to physical or mental situations and there's you know the big push in golf of grow the game, grow the game, grow the game and I'm like why don't we bring back the game to individuals who thought they lost it. So with the hand-eye coordination through doing trick shots throughout the year, right. um, it was just a very easy spin-off that I'm able to recreate most people's physical situation to change the mindset from I can to I can. So instead of me doing my trick shots using a Costco fold-up chair, now I'm hitting balls in a wheelchair. Instead of me hitting trick shots standing on one leg, now I have a prosthetic leg that I can put myself in as an able-bodied person. Instead of me hitting balls with one arm, I can lean now on a walker representing a stroke patient and hit balls. Now golf might not be the way that they used to play, but golf is now an excuse to get out and spend four hours or five hours of social time with me. Kind of like the sure, situations like, uh, you yeah, and I yeah. are in, right? Sure, yeah. But it's giving people the opportunity <laughs> yeah. to play the game of golf again in an adaptive way. Okay, so if people are not familiar, so Todd is a PGA of Canada professional and Todd really became known as a trick shot artist going out giving exhibitions all around the world and that sort of developed, as you said, into this adaptive type recreation as far as golf and exhibitions and that's really sort of taken on a life of its own. Uh, obviously got some great support now with Adidas Golf getting right. behind you and doing right. some things and what has that meant to you especially in the last year as far as how everything has grown? Adidas has been absolutely incredible. I you know that just the credibility of having Adidas presents bring back the game I could never afford that kind of a credibility and it's instantaneous and so what we did with with the help of, of Leslie Hawkins mm -hmm. who you know yep. with Adidas Canada we came up with a concept of filming a short documentary video at the LPG Manual Life at yep. Whistle Bear in September and basically what we did is I brought four of my bring back the game athletes out to the golf course day one was standing on a par three playing golf with each group that came through sure. Uh, we had Lori Kane as an ambassador, and we also had Danielle Kang, who are both Adidas ambassadors, yep. but uh, we had them through the day, which kind of gave the, the all the other girls then were a lot more receptive when they saw sure. Lori and Danielle there, that they that we were hitting shots, we had drones flying overhead. Then the second day, we stood on the driving range while all the girls were warming up, and we put on a little bring back the game clinic, an adaptive clinic, where we actually mm -hmm. introduced the prosthetic leg and the wheelchair to the, to the girls and they were able to put themselves into the situation, which not only shows them, lets them experience what the individuals are going through, but it gives them a little bit more, and it's a powerful tool. Um, with the video, I don't have to explain what Bring Back the Game is anymore. Yeah. We show the video and people automatically are like, how can we help out? Yeah. Because everybody knows somebody who's in a differently able yep. situation. Yeah. And I mean, you know, when you're talking about that, I mean, when you say differently abled, I mean, obviously, we just watched you out front here with, uh, you know, a differently able athlete, a gentleman who had cerebral palsy. and. It's amazing the connection that you can have with those people and there's a different kind of joy of you know, working with somebody who maybe has a passion for the game, but as you said, all of a sudden is you know, maybe thinking that they're done. And, and, or, or they think it is. Correct. And that's the great thing about it is it, it's, it's changing the mindset of the industry and now starting to change the mindset of, of, of the individual but the industry. Yeah. And the industry is where I'm having it's not traditional. Right. And you know, and I appreciate the industry. They they worry about two things, pace of play mm -hmm. and course conditions. And that's what they worry about with everybody. But if I'm uh, if, if I stress to the individuals that I'm working with that are differently able that those are the only two things that are going to uh, not allow you to play golf right. if you're not aware of what you're doing and where yeah. you're on the golf course. But people are so apt to going, you know what, I don't care. I just want to hit a golf yeah, ball. Yeah, they just want to be out there. And exactly, an experience. And, and not only am I working with the individual, but I'm also yeah. working with the caregivers as well. But has there been a particular situation that really maybe touched you more than another or a situation oh where somebody was, you know, just thought golf was done for I them? have so many stories. The, I, I've got two that come to mind, and, and one's a Canadian story, one's a U.S. story. The U.S. story, I had an individual 
um, that came to one of the clinics but stood off to the side suffering from severe PTSD. Okay. But also, and, and that was the reason why he was, he was kind of by himself, but he also took a bullet in the neck in a gunfight in Afghanistan. Okay. Lost two of his buddies in the same gunfight. So he was in a wheelchair uh, paralyzed from the waist down. So he was back in the corner um, while I was doing my demo, then everybody dispersed and went out on the golf course. And what I did is I grabbed them my wheelchair mm -hmm. and I just started hitting balls. Sure. And what I looked, every time I hit a ball, I'd glance over and I would start <laughs> to see the brains yeah. going, oh my God, I think I can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And within five minutes, um, I, had him, I had him over here yeah. uh, talking to him and just talking sure, to him about what happened, questions. finding yeah. out his history. Then I said, you ready to give golf a try? And he's like, can I? And because I was in a chair, I was able, okay, this is what you're gonna go through, this is what you're gonna experience. I was able to yeah. recreate the situation. Within 10 minutes, he was hitting the ball about 100 yards. That's cool. So after 20 I minutes- I know a lot of people that like to hit the ball 100 yards. Absolutely, <laughs> myself as well. <laughs> and after 10 minutes though, I looked at him and I said, are you ready to go? And he goes, no, I'm, I'm having fun. I said, no, you ready to go play golf? Yeah. And he was just, he was speechless. So I literally wheeled him to the first tee, got him set up, we hit our tee shot, I wheeled him to his second shot, set it up again, but what I didn't realize is his wife came to pick him up. I'm on the first tee, called two of his buddies who lived around the corner that he used to golf with. He was okay. a diehard golfer. So we went out and we played hole number one, then we played hole number nine. We're 50 yards from the green. He looks up, his wife is in tears. Here's this hoorah soldier, yeah, yeah, hard yeah. ass, like you would sure. not believe yeah. because of the stuff that he's been through. He's in tears, and we're all friggin' like blubbering idiots. But we gave him back the game of golf. Yeah, yeah. The second story is a is a Canadian story. I was doing the um, the Web.com tour event um, out in Halifax, okay. and yeah. it was the Canada Cup. Now you remember that it was weird. to let and Hearn yeah. took on Immelman, Kucher, Vijegas. Um, so they went out. And they they did a nine hole pro am. Mm -hmm. Came in for lunch. And while they were having lunch, I put on my, my Golf With Attitude sure. clinic, yeah. but I saw somebody who was in a wheelchair that lost his leg from the leg, from the knee down. So after the clinic, I walked over to him. I said, what'd you think of the clinic? He said, oh my God, it was amazing. I looked at him, I said, so when was the last time you played golf? And he said, five years ago. And I said, why five years? And he looked at his leg, he looked at me, and he goes, because I've lost my leg. And I said, you know what? When the range disappears, when, when all the people leave, why don't you and I go out on the driving range? We'll just yeah. talk and have some fun. What I didn't realize, this was at Ashburn Golf Club mm -hmm. in just outside of Halifax. He was the head pro for 25 years. Wow. He quit the game cold turkey because he didn't think he could play again. Within 15 minutes, I had him hitting the ball. He looked at his wife and goes, I want to make a tee time tomorrow. Yeah. This was a pro for 25 years, yeah. but how long it took him to get to that spot, golf yeah. was his life. Yeah. And he quit cold turkey because he didn't think he could play again. And it was changing the mindset from I can't to I can. And it's so powerful. Yeah. And sometimes it's just an individual that calls me up and says, I want to hit one more golf ball with my grandson. Sure. And experience time. Now for them, it might be hitting the ball 30 yards and that's golf to them. But at least when they buy a bucket of golf balls now, they can give the golf balls to the grandson and hit a couple and they still have that bonding moment. Yeah, I guess that's a big thing for people too, is to realize that golf is not just one thing. It comes in many shapes, many forms, and as you said, it could be as simple as just hitting a ball, it could be putting, it could be doing anything, but it's that connection that we all build to the game over the years. Uh, Think yeah. about it was snatched from you and you couldn't play the game of golf again. Like, how, like my dad gave me the, the, the game of golf, like, like most fathers sure. give their son the game. My dad, I, I wish I could hit one more golf hole with my dad. Yeah. My dad's passed away. And that though is what keeps me going with bring back. Because if I can give yeah. that to somebody else, that's keeping my dad's memory alive in me. Yeah. And it's powerful. Yeah, and I know for myself, I mean, I've, I've had injuries and things before and I've always thought, how's that gonna affect me as far as the game? And maybe as a younger person, I would think, oh, my score or things like that. But as you get more mature and realize it, you know, it's just that connection to the game. So Absolutely. it's just being out there and being involved with it. So yeah, it's incredible. So if people wanna find out more about Bring Back the Game and where they Bring go. Bringbackthegame.ca, it's okay. pretty easy. And, and, and all the contact information there, we've got incredible stories in there. Um, and, and the support that Flagstick has given has been amazing and allowing the platform to get the message out there to show that golf is a sport for everyone. Now Adaptive Golf is here to stay because yeah. in September, the Invictus Games is coming right. to Toronto. 
and we're introducing golf as a sport. Now, the Invictus Games, this is going to be the third year. Yep. It was London, Orlando, spearheaded by Prince Harry. Right. It's coming to Toronto this year, and they're introducing golf as a sport. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a big part of it, and I'm looking so forward. But when people see that, they're not going to have a choice but to look at adaptive golf. Which is great. So get out there and see uh, bringbackthegame.ca. Uh, you will see that video there uh, from the Manulife, which is incredible. I've seen it a couple times because I definitely wanted to go back and watch it a couple times. It's very inspirational. And really for everybody out there, the lesson is that golf is golf. I mean, it can be anything to you. And uh, the game itself really uh, needs to come back to everybody and everybody can play. And it doesn't matter what your restrictions or what you think the restrictions are. And uh, Todd is doing a great job of uh, helping people do that. Oh my God, thank you so much for the opportunity. Appreciate the program. Love it, thanks.